various workshops, talks, meditation and practice sessions, movie screening and research symposium and others were conducted during this period. Let us now welcome our guest of honor, Dr. Hajit Jyotipura. I also invite Dean of Student Affairs, Professor Samya Mukherjee. Also, we have Chairman Jim Kana, Professor Atul Srivastava, sir. I now request Professor Ashish Pandit, sir, to hand over a Tulsi plant to our guest, Dr. Joshi Pura. I now request <laughs> Professor Mumai from the Home Department to hand over a social plan to Dean S.A. Professor Samya Mukherjee. Sir. I also request Professor Mumai sir to hand over a Tulsi plant to Professor Adul Srivastava sir. Let me now request the dignitaries to join the practice of the common yoga protocol. So please join and be seated on the mat. Okay, phone to our Google Pay. Okay, okay. The participants can be seated on any sitting position and we will be playing a video. So try to be synced with the video. Please be ready for a prayer. We will start with a prayerful mind. You may sit erect and close your eyes for the prayer. Welcome to the world of yoga. Let us start yoga sadhana with chalana kriyas or loosening practices to increase microcirculation. Neck exercises, forward and backward neck bending. Stand in an alert posture. Keep feet comfortably apart and your arms on the waist. Exhale and bend head forward slowly and try to touch the chin to the chest. Inhale, move the head as far back as is comfortable and come back with inhalation. Right and left neck bending. Exhale, 
bend the head slowly to the right. Bring the ear as close as possible to the shoulder. Inhale, bring the head to normal position. Exhale, bend the head to the left side. Inhale, bring the head up to normal position. Right and left twisting. Exhale, gently turn the head to the right side so that the chin is in line with the shoulder. Inhale, bring the head to the normal position. Exhale, turn the head to the left side. Inhale and bring the head to the normal position. Neck rotation. Bend the head forward trying to touch the chin to the chest. Inhale, slowly rotate the head clockwise while coming down, exhale. Rotate the head in anti-clockwise direction. Feel the stretch around the neck and loosening up of the joints and muscles of the neck and release of tension in the neck. People with neck pain and spondylitis should do the practice gently. Shoulder movements. Feet together, make the body straight. The arms by the sides. Inhale. Raise both the arms sideways above your head with the palms outwards. Exhale and bring them down in the same manner. The arms must not touch the head when going up or the thighs when coming down. The palms must be open with the fingers together. Shoulder rotation. Stand erect. Raise both the arms. Place the fingers of the left hand on the left shoulder and the fingers of the right hand on the right shoulder. Full rotation of both the elbows in a circular manner. Try to touch the elbows in front of the chest on the forward movement and touch the ears while moving up. Twist the body towards the right side so that the left palm touches the right shoulder. Come back with inhalation. Now exhale, twist the body towards the left side so that the right palm touches the left shoulder. Come back with inhalation. Repeat, do slowly with breathing. Comfortably apart. Slowly raise both the arms sideways till they are horizontal. Exhale. Slowly bend to the right side and place the right hand just behind the right foot. The left arm is straight up in line with the right arm. Remain in this posture for 10 to 30 seconds with normal breathing. This prevents flat foot, strengthens the calf, thigh and waist muscles makes the spine flexible. As you inhale, slowly come up. Repeat for the left side. Avoid this posture in case of slipped disc, sciatica and after undergoing abdominal surgery. Do not go beyond your limits Padrasana. Let us now get ready for sitting postures. Padrasana. Bhadra means firm. Sit erect with the legs stretched out straight in front. Keep the hands beside the hips. This is Dandasana. Now put the soles of your feet together. Exhale and clasp your hands together over your toes. Pull your heels as close as possible up to the perineum region. This is the final position. Stay here for some time.
Padrasan keeps the body firm and stabilizes the mind. Now stretch your leg and come to Vishramasan. Avoid this practice in case of severe arthritis and sciatica. Vajrasana. Sit in Danda Asana. Fold your legs and sit on your heels. Keep the thighs close and big toes touching. Place the hands on the knees. The head and back should be straight. This is Vajrasana. Ardh Ushtrasana. Sit in Vajrasana. Get up on your knees. Place the hands on the waist with the fingers pointing downwards. Keep the elbows and shoulders parallel. Bend the head back and stretch the neck muscles and bend the trunk backwards as much as possible. As you exhale, relax. Remain in this posture for 10 to 30 seconds with normal breathing. It helps to strengthen the back and neck muscles, relieves constipation and back pain. Return with inhalation. Sit in Vajrasana. Relax. Now we perform the full version of Ushtrasana. Sit in Vajrasana. Kneel down on the floor. Keep your thighs and feet together. Get up on your knees. Bring the knees and the feet a few inches apart. While inhaling, bend backwards. Place the right palm on the right heel and the left palm on the left heel. Be careful not to jerk the neck while bending backwards. Ushtrasana is extremely useful for defective eyesight. This is useful in relieving back pain and neck pain. It helps to reduce fat over the abdomen and hips. Those suffering from high blood pressure, heart disease and hernia should not practice this. Return with inhalation. Sit in Vajrasana. Relax. Shashankasan Shashank means hair. Spread both the knees wide apart. Keep the toes touching. Keep the palms between the knees. Exhale and slowly stretch them full length. Bend forward and place the chin on the ground. Keep the arms parallel. Look in front and maintain the posture. This helps to reduce stress and anger. Inhale and come up. Exhale and come back to Vajrasana. Stretch your legs back to Vishramasana. Patients with osteoarthritis should do this with caution. Uttan Manduk Asana. The final position of Uttan Manduk Asana resembles an upright frog, hence the name. Sit in Vajra Asana. Spread both the knees wide apart while the toes remain together. Inhale. Raise both the arms. Then cross both arms behind the head and place the hands on the upper part of the opposite shoulders. Keep the back and neck straight. Maintain this position for a while. This asana is helpful in backache and cervical pain. It helps in improving diaphragmatic movement and helps to improve lung capacity. Persons with severe knee joint pain should not perform it. 
while coming back, slowly raise both the arms with inhalation. Bring back and bring the knees together as in the initial position. Vakrasan. Vakra means twisted. Bend the right leg and place the right foot beside the left knee. Bring the left arm around the right knee and place the palm beside the right foot. Exhale. Twist the body and neck to the right. Comfortably remain in this posture. Turn your head back. Take out your hands with exhalation. Stretch your legs. Now come back and relax in Vishram Asana. This asana increases flexibility of the spine. It helps to overcome constipation, dyspepsia and in the management of diabetes. Repeat the same on the other side. Turn your head back. Take out your hands with exhalation. Stretch your legs. Now come back and relax in Vishram Asana. Makar Asana Makara means crocodile. Lie down on your stomach with the feet wide apart, feet pointing outward. Rest your head on your hands Relax. This is Makarasana. This asana is practiced for relaxation in all prone postures. It promotes relaxation of the lower back. Pujangasana. Now let us be ready for prone postures. Pujangasana. Pujang means snake. Or cobra. Lie down on your stomach, rest your head on your hands and relax the body. Now join your legs and stretch your arms. Keep the forehead on the ground. Keep your palms beside the chest and raise the elbows. Inhale, lift the chin and chest up to the navel region. This is Pujangasan. This asan is best for stress management. It also helps to manage backache and bronchial problems. Exhale. Rest your forehead on the ground and stretch your arms. Spread your legs. Place your palms and rest your head on the palms and relax. Shalabhasan. Shalaba means a locust. Lie down on your stomach. Now join your legs. Rest the chin on the floor. Keep both hands beside the body. Palms facing upwards. Inhale. Raise the legs off the floor as much as you can without bending the knees. Extend the arms and legs well to ease the lift of the body off the floor. Stay in this position comfortably. This asan helps in sciatica and lower backache. It tones the hip muscles. Now exhale. Bring the legs down towards the floor. Take out your arms and rest on the floor. Cardiac patients should avoid this posture. Setu Bandhasan. Now we move to supine postures. Setu Bandhasan. Setu Bandh means formation of a bridge. Join your legs. Keep the arms beside the body. Bend both the legs at the knees 
and bring the heels near the buttocks. Hold both the ankles firmly. Inhale. Slowly raise your buttocks and trunk up as much as you can to form a bridge. Remain comfortably. This is the final position. This asana relieves depression and anxiety. It strengthens the lower back muscles. Now exhale. Slowly return to the original position and relax. Lie down on your back. Please note, women in advanced stages of pregnancy should not practice this asana. Uttan Padasana, Raised Feet Posture In this asana, the legs are raised upward in a supine position, hence the name. Lie comfortably on the ground with the legs stretched out. The hands should be placed by the sides. While inhaling, slowly raise both the legs without bending them at the knees and bring them to a 30 degree angle. Maintain this position with normal breathing. Exhale and slowly bring both the legs down and place them on the ground. It balances the navel center, Nabhi Manipura Chakra. Ard Halasana, Half Plow Posture. This posture is known as Ard Halasana because in its final position, the body resembles half the shape of an Indian plow. Take a supine position. Keep the hands by the sides of the thighs, palms resting on the ground. Slowly raise your legs together without bending at the knees. First raise the legs up to 30 degrees then further up to a 60 degree angle. Now, slowly raise the legs to a 90 degree angle. This is the final position of the Ard Halasana. The body from the hip to the shoulder should be kept straight. Then slowly bring the legs back to the ground without lifting the head. This is very beneficial for hypertensive patients, but needs to be practiced with care. Those who have lumbosacral or lower back pain should not perform this with both legs together. Pavan Muktasana. Bend both the knees and bring the thighs to the chest. Interlock the fingers and clasp the shin below the knee. Raise the head and shoulders. Try to touch the knees with the chin. This is Pavan Muktasan. This removes constipation, gives relief from flatulence, and tones up the back muscles and spinal nerves. Bring your head back. Exhale. Stretch your legs. and relax. Avoid this practice in case of abdominal injuries, hernia, sciatica and during pregnancy. Shavasan Shav means the dead body. This asan is meant for complete relaxation. Lie down on your back with the arms and legs comfortably apart palms facing upward, eyes closed. Relax the whole body consciously. Become aware of natural breath and allow it to become rhythmic and slow. Remain in this position till you feel refreshed and relaxed. This asan helps relieve all kinds of tensions and gives rest to both the body and the mind. 
it is very beneficial in the management of stress and its consequences. Kapalabhati It and stimulates respiratory centers in the frontal brain. Sit in any meditative posture. Close the eyes and relax the whole body. Inhale deeply. Expand the chest. Expel the breath with forceful contractions of the abdominal muscles. Continue active exhalation and passive inhalation. Then, take a deep breath, exhale slowly and relax. This is one round of Kapalabhati. Each round should be followed by deep breathing. Now, do two more rounds. Kapalabhati purifies the frontal air sinuses, helps to overcome cough disorders. It is useful in treating colds, rhinitis, sinusitis, asthma and bronchial infections. Please avoid this practice in case of cardiac conditions, high blood pressure, vertigo, migraine, stroke, hernia, and gastric ulcers. Pranayama Nadi Shodhana or Anulom Vilom Pranayama is alternate breathing through the left and right nostrils. Sit in a meditative posture. Keep the spine straight and the head erect with eyes closed. Relax the body with a few deep breaths. Keep the left palm on the left knee in Jnana Mudra. The right hand should be in the Nasikagra Mudra. Place the right thumb on the right nostril. Breathe in from the left nostril. Close the left nostril. Exhale through the right nostril. Next, inhale through the right nostril. Close the right nostril and exhale through the left nostril. This is one round of Nadi Shodhana or Anulom Vilom Pranayam. Repeat for another five rounds. For beginners, the duration of inhalation and exhalation should be equal. Gradually make it one is to two. Inhalation, exhalation. The breath should be slow, steady and controlled. The main purpose of this pranayama is to purify the principal channels of energy. This nourishes the whole body. It induces tranquility, helps to improve concentration 
It increases vitality and lowers the level of stress and anxiety. It also elevates cough disorders. Sheetali Pranayam Sheet means cool. It also means calm and passionless. As the name indicates, this pranayam cools the mind-body system. Sit in the Padmasana or any other comfortable sitting posture. Place the hands on the knees in the Gyan Mudra or Anjali Mudra. Roll the tongue in from the sides to shape it as a tube. Inhale through this tube-shaped tongue. Fill the lungs with air to their maximum capacity and close the mouth. And then slowly exhale through the nostrils. Shitali Pranayam purifies the blood. It has a cooling effect on the body. It is beneficial for persons suffering from high blood pressure. It satisfies thirst and appeases hunger. It relieves indigestion and disorders caused by phlegm, cough and bile. It is beneficial for the skin and the eyes. Those who are suffering from cold, cough or tonsillitis should not do this pranayam. Brahmari Pranayama Brahmara means a black bee. During the exhalation of this pranayam, the sound produced resembles the buzzing of a black bee. Inhale deeply through both nostrils. Exhale slowly in a controlled manner, making a deep, steady, humming sound as that of a black bee. This is one round of Brahmari. Repeat two more times. This is a great tranquilizer. It's found good in the management of stress-related disorder. Now, do the Brahmari with Shanmukhi Mudra. Close your ears with your thumbs. Place the forefingers on your eyes, middle fingers on the nostrils, ring finger and small fingers on the lips. Open your nose and inhale through both nostrils. Exhale slowly in a controlled manner, making the deep humming sound of a black bee. It is a useful preparatory pranayam for concentration and meditation. Dhyan. Now, let us prepare for Dhyan. Dhyan or meditation is an act of continuous contemplation. Sit in any meditative posture. Keep your spine comfortably erect. Hold Gyan Mudra. Keep your palms facing upwards upon the thighs. Arms and shoulders should be loose and relaxed. Close your eyes and sit with a slightly upturned face. You need not concentrate. Just maintain a mild focus between the eyebrows and be conscious of your breath. Dhyan keeps the mind calm and quiet. It increases concentration, memory, 
clarity of thought and willpower. It rejuvenates the whole body and mind, giving them proper rest. It helps to develop positive emotions. Meditation leads to self-realization. Continue to be in this state of Dhyana.
Let us now take sankalp. I commit to make myself into a healthy, peaceful, joyful and loving human being. Through every action of mine, I will strive to create a peaceful and loving atmosphere around me. I strive to break the limitations of who I am right now and include the entire world as my own. I recognize the kinship of my own life with every other life. I recognize the unity of all there is. End the yoga practice session with Shanti Part or Universal Prayer. Yes, Sri Parvati He was also the chairman of board of BHP Sri Lanka. A graduate in electrical engineering and alumnus of IIM Ahmedabad, Dr. Joshipura completed his doctorate at the School of Management, IIT Bombay. He has over 33 years of experience in several leading organizations including Tata Administrative Services, Unilever Group and Johnson & Johnson. He is a dedicated yoga practitioner for more than eight years. So let me now invite Dr. Joshipura to speak a few words on his experience on yoga. Yoga is far more topical than it was in my time. It 
was probably relevant at that time because very few people knew about it. But today it's just a so I don't think that's more relevant. Uh, but I've flirted with, with this for over 30 years, but my regularly irregular practice started about eight years ago. And uh, within the limitations of work life, etc., whatever I can do, I try to do. But uh, one thing is for sure that uh, uh, my commitment is certain. Uh, it's not something which I would give up for anything. So that should tell you that my experience is important. I just want to leave you with three things. You know what the right? This is what I want to say. And you'll have to, this is an empirical science, so you'll have to sort of uh, experience this, as it were, on your own. So the first is, I think, getting the right and a good teacher is extremely important. I mean, you can do this if you're doing it for therapeutic reasons or it feels good, but if you are a dedicated and sincere follower, then it's important to get a good and experienced teacher. What do I mean by that? This, today, this is very, very topical, and uh, the lure of commercial is quite substantial here. And I'm not saying that a teacher that is true will do a free of cost. But I think it's important to assess your teacher's dedication and commitment to his practice. So the commercial element should be a byproduct and not the end. So that's what I mean by good and The second is uh, there are multiple school styles or that. Stay with one. It doesn't matter what you call it, whatever works for you. But stay with one and stay with the The third thing I'd like to leave you with is that regularity of practice is absolutely vital. I mean, this is true for any If you're studying a subject, if you are not regularly in touch with it, then you can use Skype, that's the body of work, so you might use it. And I think that's good for this time as well. And the last thing I want to give you is, is that this is not a physical exercise. And I just want to spend some time on this, and why it's not a physical exercise. Because in all physical exercises, uh, one thing, they are mechanical. Two, you don't necessarily have to be aware. You must have a memory on how something is done. If you're going to the gym, you must have a memory of how push-ups are done and you could be thinking of 10 other things and yet keep doing push-ups. Or you can keep running and you can keep, you know, thinking of something else. So that's, that's exercise. Where, where this differs is that it's actually a synthesis of three things. It's a synthesis of the mind, of the breath, and of the body. Let me explain how to practice. There are various ways by which you can practice anyone. Let's take, take a forward bend, for example. If by temperament, you and all of you who are high achievers, if we are high achievers, your focus is not on how you do the bend. Your focus is on whether your feet, your hands are touching the floor, and how quickly can you get your hands touched. Now that's, that's doing the posture with the mind and not with the body. You know what I mean? And the breath is nowhere more. And then you've got another style of doing the posture. So for example, it's a Sunday morning and you know, you've had a sort of series of quizzes the previous week and you want to sleep late. But you still want to do it because you've made a commitment to yourself. So you drag yourself out of bed and that will go through the motions of doing the power step. Like here, also your mind is involved, your body is really not involved. It's, 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 uh, it's resisting in every possible way. And that's a different way of doing it. Now, the right, no right way, but the most effective way of doing this, and this, this is what it was for me, but I want to see, is to really have the mind as a passive observer of the posture. The mind is not involved in what outcome of the posture is. But it's more important in the process and the precision of the body. That's the extent of the involvement of the mind. The breath is involved, and this you will realize as you go deeper in your practice, that the breath actually enables you to get into your posture. Uh, as you would have heard, you know, they said when you put your the head inside, right? That's right. There's a reason behind it. 
For example, when you're putting a heavy load, you hold your breath and breathe. That's the breath helping you, helping your body. So that's the way you have to emulate the help of your breath in getting into a posture. So typically, the rule is, as you get into a posture, you exhale, and when you get out of a posture, you exhale. And really, this is where the whole practice of posture is because from, from a regular exercise, because it's an integration of the breath, the mind, and the body, and it doesn't matter what is the extent of the flexibility that you have, what is the extent of calisthenics that you can do with the posture. That's not the intent here. Please remember, yoga is directed blood flow at its most basic and therapeutic level. So when you do a certain posture, they say that it's meant to do good for you know, like you said, especially on oxygen. Why? Because that posture directs the blood flow to your digestive system. And if that, you accept that, then there is a certain precision involved in each of these postures. It's not just a question of mechanically getting into the posture. There is a precision involved to make sure that the blood flow is directed to the area where you like, And you don't, you don't have to worry about this. You just have to understand the precision involved in the posture. So I just want to leave you with these meetings. There are many more things we can talk about. But I think if we follow some of these, then at least you will have started. So I wish you all the very best in your journey and thank you for having me right here. Thank you, sir, for that enlightening speech. Hope you are all inspired to take up yoga as a daily practice. There is a clarification. So, initially, it was told uh, Professor Jyotipura. Dr. Jyotipura is the director. He is not the director, he is in the executive committee of the LNC. So, now let me invite Chairman Jim Shana. Professor Adul Srivastava sir to hand over the certificate. First, I call Jairam Meena for completing 1008 Surya Namaskar. 1008 Surya Namaskar in a single stretch in a time span of five hours. A big round of applause for Jaira Mina. Let me now call upon the 14 members of yoga from the previous year to please come as I call out the name. Chandra Pradap Singh, he was the manager of yoga for the previous year. A round of applause. Please continue clapping. Saurabh Bhatt, Priyanka, Priyanka Jena,
पूर्ण संख्या छे का तेरा मीना सभी शर्मा विकास नरिया Sir, I now hand over the mic to Priyanka for delivering the vote of thanks. Good morning, all. Thank you for being present for the IB Vice 2018. Uh, on behalf of IB Bombay, I would like to thank Dr. Jyoti Thora, who was present with us and sharing his time with us and giving us his insight on this. Uh, so, and also the dignitaries present over here, Dean S. S. Sir and Professor Sir Shivas Sir, for being with us and encouraging us for participating in the event. Thank you, sir. Of course, that is your best and the team of volunteers who have worked throughout the month to make this event a huge success. Thank you, please. And uh, both technical and the non-technical staff out there, without whom running the event wouldn't have been possible. And last but not the least, the team participants who have come in this morning to participate in the company of our protocol. Thank you so much. I would like to make some announcements for the evening. We have the yoga ton challenge that is one lot eight students in the school. So please do come and join us for the finale. And uh, we have uh, like uh, the distribution will start around five. So be there at five and even start at six. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks.